Hello and welcome to section 7. Uh, and this is a section about mixed degree systems. So uh, let's quickly kind of talk about what a system is and, and how that applies here and mix, what mixed degrees does. So a system of equations uh, is when you have one or more equations. Let me write that down. So a system is when you have one or more equation, okay, and the solution, all right, so a solution to a system, a solution is where those graphs intersect, all right. So that's that. Okay. So what we have, um, you know, and, and it's, when we talk about mixed degree, you know, we're talking about parabolas. So, you know, parabolas, circles, and lines intersecting. Okay. So, you know, when you have, typically when you have just two lines, they intersect twice or once. But when you have something like a parabola and a line, you can find their intersection points at two different locations, okay? And that's kind of what, uh, what we're doing here, okay? So, you know, when we have a, just talking about a, a parabola and a circle, you know, we, we're pretty, pretty good with the, uh, with the parabolas um, and understanding what those equations look like. Um, and it's like, you know, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and you get a graph that looks like this, okay? Um, if you have a circle, a circle has the equation x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared, and that has something with a center at zero, okay? So, um, you know, these are just, just a review of what these, of what these uh, equations are. All right, so let's talk about the number of possible solutions. Um, you know, if, if you think about all of the ways in which a line and a parabola can intersect, uh, I want to select all of the number of ways in which a line and a parabola can intersect. So if I think about this, um, you know, I have, I have a couple of different options. Okay, I have a parabola like that, and I have a line, and that gives me two intersection points. Okay, I could have a parabola and then a line that intersects at its vertex. So that would be one point. And then I could have a parabola, and then I could have a line that is completely separate from that uh, where it doesn't intersect. So I could have as many as zero, one, or two intersection points given a parabola and a line, okay? Um, and let's think about all the different ways in which a line and a circle can intersect, okay? So, you know, if you had a circle, okay, and you had a line going through it, Okay, you could have two intersection points. Okay, that's the maximum number. Okay, you could also have, um, you know, a circle with a line only hitting it once. And we call that a tangent line. Okay, and maybe you heard that from geometry. Uh, but if you think of like a car tire in the road, the, the tire is only hitting the road at one point. Okay, or if you had a circle and a line where it doesn't intersect, where you have no intersection. So same thing here. You could have zero, one, two, zero, one, or two intersection points. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Okay, one method to doing this, uh, solving a system by graphic, by uh, by graphing it. Uh, you know what we have is we have this airplane height of 144 feet and a baseball in feet uh, as h equals 96t minus 16t squared. Choose the graph of the system shown above. So what I want to do is actually go to Desmos and put both of these graphs in into my uh, system of into my grapher and see what happens. Okay, give me one second. Let me do that real quick. Okay, and so what you guys can see here, once I graph both of these, I've got y equals 144, and that's just a horizontal line uh, going through 144, and then I have my parabola here y equals 96x minus 16x squared. And what we notice is that the intersection point of those two lines is right here at the point 3, 144. 
Okay, and so what I know about this is that, um, you know, a couple things. Uh, the baseball has a maximum height of 144 feet um, after three seconds. And so, um, you know, that's what I know. And that's when it has the same height as the airplane, okay? And so, you know, I want you to notice that when I did put these in, even though my variable here is H and T, Okay, that's the same thing as saying y and x, okay? Just depends on, you know, but you can still type these equations in same way here, but I just understand to know to use y and x, okay? So it doesn't matter which one you use. So the one that is the correct answer is this one, okay? All right, but let's go ahead and solve this system algebraically, okay? And so we know the answer, okay? And what we're trying to find, remember, what we're trying to find our solution is where the graphs intersect. Solution is where the graphs intersect. Okay? And so that solution is a point on the graph. That's a point on the graph. Okay? So the solution is where the graphs intersect, and that's a point on the graph. And that's going to be an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So we're going to solve for an x-value and solve for y-value. Now, the nice thing about this one is that, you know, I have the equation h equals 144 and h equals 96t minus 16t squared. Now, what I'm going to do is do some substitution. Because h is equal to 144, I can take 144 and plug that into h of the other side. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to get 144 is equal to 96t minus 16t squared. Now what I, what I notice about this is that this is a quadratic, okay? And in order to solve a quadratic, what I have to do is I have to set one of the, uh, the whole thing equal to zero. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract 144 from both sides, okay? And so as a result, that's going to give me 0 is equal to, and I'm going to reorder this uh, so that it looks nice. Uh, I've got negative 16t squared plus 96t minus 144. So in order to solve this, what I uh, first want to do is I'd want to factor this. Okay, I could use the uh, quadratic formula, but what I notice is that all of these numbers are divisible by 16. Okay, and actually, and you can do a number of things. You can factor out a sixteen, a negative sixteen, or I could just simply divide everything by negative sixteen. Okay, and I'm talking about everything, even the zero. Okay, so you know what happens here is I end up getting zero is equal to just a positive t squared minus six um, t, and then plus nine. So then the question is, all right, well, what is the, um, all right, wh wh how could I rewrite this, okay? And what I notice is that, um, you know, how could I factor that, all right? The question is, is two numbers that, mul that, that multiply to 9 but add to negative 6. And so that's going to be the quantity t minus 3 times t minus 3, okay? And so what I could do is I could set, you know, I, I could rewrite that as the quantity t minus 3 squared and then take the square root of both sides and I would end up getting 0 is equal to t minus 3, add 3, add 3, and I know that t is equal to 3, okay? And that's what we had figured out graphically up here was that the x value, the independent variable, is 3, okay? Now what I know is that you know, I, I, could, I could plug t equals 3 into, you know, probably up here. All right, and let's go ahead and just do that. Let's, let's, let's see what that gives us. So I've got h, and, and remember, we, we want to take this t and plug it back into either equation, okay? And so uh, what I've got here, uh, if I plug in a, if I plug in 3 into... This equation here, let's just go ahead and do that. Um, I would do h is equal to 96 times 3 uh, minus 16 times 3 squared. 
okay? And so if we evaluate that, 96 times 3 is going to give me 288, okay, minus uh, 16 times 9, okay? 16 times 9 is going to give me 144. So H is equal to 288 minus 144. And 288 minus 144, that's just going to give me a value of 144, okay? So, you know, T is like your X value, okay? H is like your Y value. So my solution, okay, how I'd want to write this is write it as 3, 144, and that's the same thing that we saw graphically. So there is always a way to check doing this graphically, okay? But we want to know how to do it algebraically as well. All right, so now over here, um, I want to solve this system using substitution, okay, solve it algebraically, and so what I have, um, and I can do this a number of ways, um, it doesn't necessarily matter, but what I'm looking for is I'm looking for an isolated variable, okay, and I've got y is equal to 2x squared plus 5, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2x squared plus 5, and I'm going to substitute that into y, of my other equation, okay? So I'm going to take this value and plug it in here. So when I rewrite my top equation, I'm going to rewrite it as x plus, now I don't want to write y. I'm going to write what y is equal to, and I've got that y is equal to 2x squared plus 5. So I'm going to put 2x squared plus 5, and that's equal to 8, okay? So now what I have is I have a quadratic that is strictly in terms of x, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, reorder this and set it equal to zero. So the first things first, I'm going to do 2x squared plus an x plus 5 is equal to 8. All right, put it in a standard form. And then I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, okay, minus 8. And that's going to give me 2x squared plus x plus, or let's do minus 3 here, and that's equal to zero. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to solve this. And I'm going to use the box method. I like the box method. That's one of my favorites because it kind of is the easiest. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make a box. Okay. And I'm going to put 2x squared into my top equation. And I'm going to put negative 3 uh, into my lower right box. Okay. So what I want to do is say, okay, well, what two things multiplied together are going to give me 2x squared? So one of those is going to be 2x and one of those is going to be x. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask myself the question, okay, now what two things multiplied together are going to give me um, negative 3? And so one of them is going to be 3 and negative 1 or negative 3 and 1. So this is our chance to kind of play with this a little bit and see what we get. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a positive 3 here. Okay, I'm going to do a plus 3 here, and then I'm going to do a minus 1 up here. Okay, now here's what I need to do. I'm going to take 3 and multiply it by x, so that's going to give me 3x. Okay, and then I'm going to take negative 1 and multiply it by 2x, and that's going to give me negative 2x. Now, I should be able to add these two together here, and they should give me my middle term, which is x. And that's true, so 3x minus 2x gives me a positive x. So this has been uh, factored appropriately. So now what I need to do is I, I know that, you know, the next step down from here to here, from factoring this, I need to use my factors. And that's going to be x minus 1, and that's going to be 2x plus 3, okay? And I'm going to set those equal to 0, okay? Equal to 0. All right, so now... Once I've factored that, all I need to do is set each of these equal to 0. So I've got x minus 1 equal to 0, and I've got 2x plus 3 equal to 0, okay? So here I'm going to add 1 to both sides, okay? And so I get that x is equal to 1. And then here I get, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and so I get 2x is equal to negative 3. I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by 2. So I get that x is equal to negative 3 halves, okay? And so this is what I know, all right? I know that x is equal to a positive 1, and I know x is equal to negative 3 halves. Now what I'm going to do is we still have to take those and solve those for y. 
Okay, so um, I need to take these, and let me show you, um, you know, using my arrows here. I need to plug both of these back into, and I'm going to use my top equation because I'm not dealing with anything squared here. Okay, um, and so what I'm going to do is uh, solve for y, okay, given those two x values. So I'm going to write that equation down. I'm going to write down x plus y is equal to 8. Okay, and so I'm going to use that equation. And so when x equals 1, all right, so when x is equal to 1, okay, I'm going to plug that in. I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to do 1 plus y is equal to positive 8. If I subtract 1, subtract 1, then I get that y is equal to 7. Okay, so then I have the solution, okay, 1 comma 7. All right, that's going to be a point where they intersect. Okay, uh, the next one is when x equals negative 3 halves. Okay, I'm going to plug that in for x, so I get negative 3 halves plus y is equal to 8. Okay, now I'm going to add 3 halves to both sides. Okay, add 3 halves to both sides. So then I get that y is equal to 8 over 1 plus 3 halves. And so uh, I'm going to multiply, I'm going to get a common denominator, multiply that by 2 and 2. So we get that y is equal to 16 halves plus 3 halves. All right, and that's going to give me 19 halves. Okay, so y is equal to 19 halves. All right, so now, um, you know, to write that down, all right, so the, you know, I could write it in fraction form as negative 3 halves comma 19 halves, uh, but as a decimal, all right, that solution would be negative 1.5 comma, and then 19 halves, oh gosh, what is that? Is that 10 and a, no, 9 and a half? Yeah, 9 and a half. Ne uh, positive 9 and a half, 9.5, okay? So what I want to do is I'm going to graph both of these equations in Desmos to see where we're at, okay? Let me do that real quick. All right, and so what we find out once we graph both of them, and I just typed them in how I saw them, okay? But what I notice is that, you know, if I look at the intersection points and highlight those, we have the point 1, 7, which was what we got algebraically here, and then we got negative 1.5 comma 9.5, which we found here, okay? So, you know, it's pretty... Uh, Pretty cool stuff, I think. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, we got to be able to, you know, do it algebraically. But also, guys, I mean, this is something that we can always do graphically to find out those solutions, okay? Okay, let's talk about uh, using circles and quadratics. And I believe that... Um, and let's, let's go through these. Okay, so we've got uh, something called concentric circles. And those are circles that have the same center, okay? And so what we have, um, you know, we want to know in how many ways can a quadratic and a circle intersect. What we see here is two. But what I see, uh, you know, if we look at a graph, and I'm just going to draw a sketch of something, um, you know, if I have a circle, okay, I could have a parabola that does this, where I have one, two, three, four solutions, OK, um, you know, obviously you can have a circle where the vertex of the parabola intersects it once. OK, and then you could have a, para a circle and a parabola that are completely separate. OK, so you could have, um, you know, zero solutions. You could have one solution. Um, you could have two solutions, which we see here. And then we could also have four solutions, okay? So you could have a number. You could have 0, 1, 2, and 4, all right? So let's go ahead and solve this one. And what we notice here is that this is going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions to it, okay? And so uh, let's go ahead and solve this, uh, you know, solve this system. So what I have is I have these two equations, all right? I have, this is my circle equation, and this is my quadratic. And what I'm going to do is, because I have y isolated, y is equal 
to 2x squared time, or minus 3, I'm going to plug that into y of my top equation. So let me rewrite my top equation and say, okay, this is x squared plus, instead of writing y, I'm going to write what y is equal to. I'm going to write 2x squared minus 3, okay, and then I'm going to square that. Okay, and then this is all equal to 2. All right, so now solving this equation is a little bit tricky. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to, because I'm squaring this, I'm multiplying this twice. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. I'm going to say x squared plus the quantity 2x squared minus 3 times 2x squared minus 3 is equal to 2. Okay, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply this out. I'm going to do the FOIL thing, okay? So I'm going to take, out here I've got x squared, okay, plus, and then the 2x squared times 2x squared is going to give me 2x, I'm sorry, 4x squared, or 4x to the fourth, okay? Uh, if I did my inside functions, that's going to give me negative uh, 6x squared, okay? And then if I do my outside functions, it's going to give me negative 6x squared. Okay, and then if I take my last functions, negative 3 times negative 3, that's going to give me positive 9. Okay, and then that's equal to 2. All right, so now what I want to do is combine my like terms. And so this is going to give me 4x to the fourth. Um, and then this is going to give me minus 12x squared. So negative 12x squared plus an x squared is going to give me uh, minus 11x squared um, plus 9 is equal to 2, okay? And if I subtract the 2 from both sides, then we're going to get this. We're going to get um, 4x to the fourth minus 11x squared plus 7 is equal to 0, okay? Now, what you notice about this is that this isn't very friendly, okay? What you've got is you have a 4x to the fourth and then an x squared, okay? So this is kind of weird. Uh, but what I want to do is I can still factor this using the box method, okay? So don't be afraid of the box method. All right, so I'm going to do the box method. I'm going to make a box here and here. And so uh, what I've got is this. I'm going to put my 4x squared here, or 4x to the fourth here, Okay, and then I'm going to put my positive 7 down here. Okay, we have to think, okay, what two things could we, um, you know, multiply together to give me 4x to the fourth, all right? And, and, you know, you could think of, you know, 2x squared and 2x squared. Um, you know, let's try that for now. So let's do... Uh, let me do 2x squared and 2x squared. Um, and so then if I do that, that gives me 4x to the fourth. But what two numbers multiply together are going to give me 7, okay? Now, rem let me remind you that both of these have to, that, that we, our middle terms have to add to negative 11x squared. So these values actually need to be, and let me just go ahead and do minus a 1, and minus 7, okay? And when I do that, here's what I get. I'm going to get 7 times, negative 7 times 2x squared is going to give me negative 14x squared. And when I take negative 1 times 2x squared, that's going to give me um, negative 2x squared, okay? And when I do that, Okay, what happens is, is when I add these together, it's going to give me negative 16, which is not what I need here. Okay, I need a negative 11x. So this doesn't work. All right, so let's try this again. Okay, and let's do the box method again. All right, so I think what my problem was is my first factor. So if I do 4x to the fourth here, and if I do 7 down here, let's try this. Let's try x. Let's try 4x squared, and let's try an x squared here, okay? And what I want to do is, let's do this. Let's do a minus 1 here, and then let's do a minus 
7 here. So negative 1 and negative 7 multiply to positive 7. Now, if I take negative 1 and multiply it by 4x cubed, or 4x squared, that's going to give me negative 4x squared. Okay, if I take negative 7 and multiply it by x squared, that's going to give me negative 7x squared. And if I add those together, that will give me negative 11x squared. So now this is, this is okay. All right, so now what I want to do is I factored that, and let's do, um, let's write that as x squared minus 1 times 4x squared minus 7 is equal to 0. Okay, so now here's where it gets weird, all right? I'm still going to set each of these equal to 0 and uh, solve for x, okay? So when I do that, I'm going to do x squared minus 1 equal to 0, and I'm going to do 4x squared minus 7 equal to 0. Now when I solve this over here, okay, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. As a result, I'm going to get x squared is equal to positive 1. So then when I take the square root of both sides, remember we have to do positive and negative, so I'm going to get x is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay, and so I have this. I have that x is equal to 1 and x equals negative 1. These are my first two solutions. Okay, now same thing over here. All right, if I add 7 to both sides, okay, then I get 4x squared is equal to 7. And then if I divide by 4 on both sides, then I'm going to get that x squared is equal to positive 7 fourths. Now if I apply the square root, okay, to both sides, then that's going to give me that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7 fourths, okay? And when I'm evaluating that, you know, I need to realize that this is going to give me plus or minus the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 4, and so that's going to give me the square root of 7 divided by 2, because I can, I can evaluate the square root of 4, okay? So this is plus or minus that. All right, so now my solutions for this, okay, let me zoom in real quick. This is going to give me uh, x is equal to positive square root of 7 over 2, and x is equal to negative square root of 7 over 2. Okay, it gives me both of those. So now what I'm going to do uh, is I have both of those x values. Now remember, what we have? How many, x, how many of those do we have? Okay, we've got four of them, all right? And if you look over here, how many times does the graph cross the x? How many times do these graphs intersect? And that's 4, okay? So now I've got this. I've got that x equals, and I'm going to use this bottom equation here to do this. So let me come over here, 2x squared minus 3. So I've got y equals 2x squared minus 3. All right, so now watch what I do, okay? I know that x is equal to 1, x is equal to negative 1, I know that x is equal to the square root of 7 halves, and x is equal to negative square root of 7 halves. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 1. So when x equals 1, so when x equals 1, okay, I've got y is equal to 2 times 1 squared minus 3, so I've got y is equal to 2 uh, 1 squared is just 1, so 2 times 1 is just 2, so I've got 2 minus 3, so I've got y is equal to negative 1, okay? So when x equals 1, y is equal to negative 1, all right? So that's my first solution. So I've got the point 1, comma, negative 1, all right? Now, when x equals negative 1, I get y is equal to... Uh, 2 times negative 1 squared minus 3. Okay, when I take negative 1 and square it, that's going to give me positive 1. So I've got y is equal to 2 times 1 minus 3. So y is equal to 2 minus 3. And so we get that y is equal to negative 1. Okay, so when x equals negative 1, y equals negative 1. So that's another solution. Okay, so I've got the point negative 1 comma negative 1. All right. Now, let's plug in square root of 7 over 2. So, um, let me change up colors here. So, when x equals positive square root of 7 over 2, okay, let's plug that in. So, we've got y is equal to 2 times the quantity square root of 7 
over 2 quantity squared minus 3. Now this looks like it's not very fun to deal with, but it's really not too bad, okay? Just use your order of operations. So I'm going to do 2 times, and watch what happens, okay? I'm going to get the square root of 7 squared over 2 squared, and then minus 3. Okay, so then when I do that, I get 2 times square root of 7 squared is just going to give me 7, and then over 4 minus 3. Okay, so then what happens is we get y is equal to that the 2 and the 4 divide out to 1 over 2. So this is going to give me 7 halves minus 3. Okay, and let's get a common denominator. So I've got y is equal to uh, 7 halves minus 6 halves. Okay, 3 over 1. Okay, if I multiply numerator and denominator by 2, I'm going to get 6 halves. And then when I do that, that's going to give me, what is that, uh, 1 half? Y is equal to 1 half. Okay, 7 minus 6 is 1 over 2 is 1 half. So that gives me the point, okay, um, square root of 7 over 2, comma, 1 half. Okay, now let's do the exact same thing uh, for the negative 1. So when x equals negative square root of 7 over 2, so when x equals negative square root of 7 over 2, let's plug that in. So you get y is equal to 2 times negative square root of 7 over 2, quantity squared, minus 3. Now, going through this all over again is kind of tricky. However, what happens when you square a negative? It just becomes positive. So what happens is is this is still going to give me the same thing that we had down here. Okay, it's still going to give me 7 fourths. So we get y is equal to 2 times 7 fourths minus 3. And so that was just going to give me the same thing, and it's going to give me uh, 7 halves minus 3, which is y equals 7 halves minus 6 halves, and that's going to give me y is equal to positive 1 half. Okay, so... What we end up getting as a solution is negative square root of 7 over 2, comma, 1 half. Okay, now let me evaluate this in the calculator. Uh, these ones, you know, we already know. And let me write those down over here. Um, let's do square root of 7 over 2, comma, 1 half. And then let's do negative square root of 7 over 2, comma, 1 half. All right. Now, these answers as, a fra as decimals, okay, if I do uh, the square root of 7 and then divide that by 2, that's going to give me about 1.32. So these points here, you know, translate to about 1.32, comma, 0.5 as decimals. So just when you're doing this on the calculator, just to check, uh, and this is negative 1.32.5. Um, and then this is 1.32 comma 0.5. All right, so, you know, these are all of our answers. These are our solutions. Now, remember, we have four of them. And that's because our graph had four intersection points, okay? So what I want to do is go ahead and plug both of these equations into Desmos and see if we do, in fact, get the same thing. Now, I'm going to zoom way in over here. Yeah. Okay, give me a second. All right, and so what I notice about this is that, you know, we do have four intersection points, and they are the same ones that we found here. We have negative 1, negative 1, that's here. Okay, we have 1, negative 1, that's the red one. Okay, and then we have 1.32.5 is the purple one. And then 1.32.5, or negative 1.323, and then 0.5. So that's all we've got. Okay, so, you know, you can do this always, always, always check graphically, okay, to know what you're doing. However, you can do them algebraically, and there might be a point in time when you might have to be able to do all this math, okay? It was very tedious. I made some mistakes down here, but, you know, it's all stuff that we've done before, okay? I know this might be kind of tricky to do, but, you know, there's that. I'm going to go ahead and skip the last problem to save some time for you. Um, but go ahead and get started on the assignment and the quiz, and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.